Hello, you're listening to the Otaku Spirit Anime Cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo! Today's episode is a discussional podcast episode where we talk about the news that seems important to us, that should be important to you because it's important to us. Dive into our community, hopefully, if you have enough time. A lot of stuff has happened over the last three weeks since we had our last discussional. Uh, we, have, of course, did our first impressions of the summer season, and uh, yeah, the news has been pretty wild, so... A lot of really big announcements, so I'm sure that this episode, if you're not following the YouTube channel where I do kind of regular news updates, will be interesting to you. Um, always, Obviously, the bonus here is that you get Chris's perspective on a lot of this stuff, and I'm sure <laughs> one such news topic we'll have a lot to say about, so we'll have to, we'll have to see how that turns out. But uh, yeah, has it been good last couple of weeks, few weeks? Just hectic. Hectic. Keeping up with all the anime for the first impressions, obviously. Is it is it settled down now that the first impressions are done? Well, I am now taking a break and trying to see if I can catch up on uh, Genshin. Mm. And I am get highly... Your, get your official outfit. I am highly agitated at how much freaking dialogue there is. <laughs> Dude, it's so bad. It's I, so well, bad. I've, I've spent several hours and I just got through... I'm, I'm in the middle of day three... Ugh. of the main quest. I haven't even started on must, much of any of the side quests in that stupid, um, the golden apple. And it's just, this is dumb. It's, it, it literally, it's me just editing videos, just hitting the X button and then looking back every now and then it's well, so bad. And you can't like let it do auto because it, it forces you to choose things like every two seconds as if like, just give her, it's Ao Yuki. Let the damn character have a voice. And it's it, it's kind of dumb because I, I mean it looks like it could be some interesting di- uh, discussion, but yeah. I don't have time. It, yeah. Exactly, it, it looks like it's gone into kind of Kazaha's background. Um, now I'm in the middle of uh, Zane Lane's or Jane Ling's um, background, and then I'm a, a, I'm assume I'm going to get into official at some point and um, Mona, and it's like all all at least three of. Uh, Xin Ling, uh, Kazaha, and uh, uh, and Fischl, I do definitely want to get into their backgrounds. And even Mona, I'd be interested. But like you said, don't I don't time. have time. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to get back into the anime, and and that's. I just know that I'm not I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to be a week behind by the end of this. It it's, it sucks because it, it's one of those things where I I want to read the story, but there's two aspects here. One, they need to give a skip button, and two, they need to replay. And what that'll allow is that people that don't have time to sit there and read all that junk is going to be able to go back and watch it later. The second issue is be- why I don't have time to sit there and read all that story is because it's so overly written. It's so overly written. It's way too much dialogue. They need to condense their stuff down. It's like their writers, like I've said several times before, are so they have their heads so far up their own butts. It's like, write a novel. Like, <laughs> please. This is... And it, it boggles the mind because it's supposed to be a mobile game. I don't understand how, you know, obviously, again, this is really big in China on mobile. I don't understand how they do it. Like you're in a subway or something and you're and you're playing the game. It's like, how do they read through all that stuff? I don't I don't get it. It's, it's, unless the Chinese dialogue is way shorter and they're just overriding it for everywhere else. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I still to this day don't understand why they don't put a skip. Even the new game, ZZZ, um, which I think is apparently on beta now because i'm seeing people play it now that one has where you can go back and rewatch it and so i'm assuming you can skip as well so it's like okay transfer that over to here please yeah. i just i don't i don't have time for all that dialogue i just skip it all and it's just it's so time consuming even if i'm spamming x button it takes forever which tells me they're really long but yeah um <laughs> outside of that i got i got kazaha so i was that was good um i'm right now debating if i want to buy the um the skin for Deluke, he looks really good. But I've never played Deluke, so I don't know that I want to get his his outfit. But at the same time, we'd have was it the the plant place coming up here soon, so I might just wait and and do that. So, well, yeah. if I get Deluke, I'll b- probably buy. I I really want to know if you get his outfit if you get him for free. That's heck no, <laughs> heck no. <laughs> that would be too op. Heck no. Well, and that that was my thing is I I think you had asked me at some point about that, and I said if I was to get him for free, but it I I don't know. I mean that that would make it very viable. Oh, that would be like super. Uh, like everybody would be buying it at that yep. point. Shoot, that would be like the he's, easiest because that's like what twenty five bucks if you buy the Welcome Moons yep. packs five times. 
he's just the only that, one not gonna happen he is the only one out of the five stars that i don't have so i'm i am now missing he's never had him. a banner yeah so yeah he, and he never will um him and um and shinobu i since i uh was catching up on shows i don't know that he would that, never will there's nothing that, saying they can't that banner went right by me, and I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that he'll just pop, or Shinobu, or she'll just pop up on one of, one of the other banners at some point that I'm, I'm actually visibly watching. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff though, good stuff though. I, I think other than, yeah, I've, I've been trying to get back in again, Shin, just to, because I got the welcome moons again, so now I have a reason to actually sign in every day and hopefully build up enough for whenever the next thing comes. And I, I'm at this point where I'm just playing it just because I want to make sure that I am ready in case it does get better <laughs> because it's just i everything they're doing now all the events and stuff are just so so blah it just and like it feels like every time they make a new event it's just there's a mechanic and then they just they kill the mechanic like the whole spyglass thing to move blocks around it's like yeah you guys made a mechanic and so i'm going to do this a million times aren't i every single level you do it's just doing these stupid mechanics over and over again well there was two mechanics one was like this thing that shoots a beam that hits objects and moves around you have to rotate them and it's like it's just just anyways genshin talk over <laughs> i went back into fate go for a little bit so i can get a bunch of the new characters and had to grind a bunch just to get um abigail abigail Sum summer i had to play a bunch of the stum the story mode just to get her so finally got her so now i'm pretty much done with genshin again <laughs> uh but yeah other than that just uh pre-con uh, Princess Connect. I've been playing a little bit of that on the side. It's it's frustrating game to play, but I still like the characters, so I'll probably keep messing with that as well. So, but yeah, other than that, just it's just anime. Uh, I'm watching Kakaguri Twins. I'm not sure if I'll do a video on it because I'm I've never been like a huge fan of Kakaguri, but I still watched it because it has the main character is one of my favorite characters of the original series. I have no clue how that connects to the original story because it seems like. They're laying out a lot of stuff that doesn't even make sense to the main story, but apparently it's a prequel story spinoff, so um, that was all right. Just tons of the usual derpy faces. I, I was thinking of doing a video just so I could start out with like a bunch of screenshots of derpy faces like, yeah, Andrew loves these faces. <laughs> that might be fun. Uh, yeah, other than that, uh, finished uh, Sayonara Zatsuba Sensei here recently, so I'll probably do a review on that one as well, and... Um, pretty much it it's pretty much it it's just trying to keep up on the animes like chris so a lot of a lot of good stuff i'm kind of at the point now where i'm starting to wonder what i'm going to drop for the season but i don't know there's going to be much to drop unfortunately that's again the whole issue with the season is that it's a lot of really good stuff so i really don't want to drop anything but we'll, we'll see <laughs> we'll see i'm gonna try to keep up with it as it goes along that way I don't have to binge as much stuff at the end of the season i do like binging at the end of the season just because it makes it easier to remember like what happened in each show Whereas if you watch like 40 shows episode by episode, by the end of the season, it's really hard to remember what happened at the very beginning because uh, a lot of stuff. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, we should jump into the news because we have a ton to go through and a ton of it might have a lot of discussions. Though I say that and then whenever I say it's going to have a ton of discussion, we don't. But if I say we don't, it, we, we do. So let's let's kick things off with the banger the big one that obviously um is going to <laughs> we, i i don't want i don't want to put this later on in the episode because we're going to keep referencing it and going we're not talking about that yet so i thought we would just kick things off with it but yes crunchy rolls let's just be honest it's sony uh sony has purchased right stuff anime the anime distribution site for all your anime needs it is no longer your <laughs> store for all anime needs but it was <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, Crunchyroll, Right Stuff have come out and announced that a purchase has happened. So, yay. I, I don't know who would not know, but yes, RightStuffAnime.com is a website that you can go to that has pretty much everything that's distributed in North America. They do have some imports, like figures and stuff like that, but it's mostly like anime, manga. If you need it, it and it sells in the in North America, you're going to be able to find it there. And again, technically, yes, a lot of... Uh, the more inappropriate stuff, uh, mature stuff, obviously, and yeah, I, I've been purchasing from them a long time. Uh, technically, our YouTube channel was launched <laughs> just so that I can post unboxing videos of all the figures, well, figures from Mamiami, but like mostly like Blu-rays and stuff, big holiday sales from Right Stuff. I would post unboxing videos of tons of stuff I was unboxing at the time because I had tons of disposable income at the time. <laughs> I don't really do that no more, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, they've always been known for having really insane sales. And yeah, unfortunately, 
I, we don't know what was going to happen now, but yeah, Sony bought them, and uh, which, which which makes sense honestly because for those that don't know, technically if you bought things at Funimation.com, and I think some things from Crunchyroll, I'm not quite sure what all. Uh, it would ship from Right Stuff. They were their distributor. They would house them, warehouse them, and ship them out from their location. Same for other companies like Sentai Filmworks and stuff. If you bought from their website, it would ship from Right Stuff. This is a big distributor company. Um, now, they're not big like as in like Amazon or something like that. Obviously not. It's a very small family company, very tight-knit, very very, you know, fan-based. Uh, Sean Kleckner, the CEO, was always just kind of always willing to go out there and make goofy videos of him dancing in a penguin outfit. Very fun, very family company. And they kind of had their growth based on just doing really good sales and respecting their customer in a way. Yes, they had issues with shipments and stuff like that. It was hard to... I've had some times where I kind of had to fight with them a little bit about damaged goods and whatnot, but they were always known for shipping out things in really padded boxes because I knew that whatever people were buying from their website, it was a collectible. It was a hobby. It was a passion. So that was kind of what they're known for. I would buy something from right stuff and they would pad the hell out of it. I'd buy the same thing from Amazon and it would come in a padded envelope destroyed. So that was kind of their thing. But yeah, let's, let's get into the actual announcement itself. I, the biggest key things they announced with this whole purchase is that Right Stuff Anime obviously is going to, because they're now owned by Sony, which we all love, they have taken all of their 18 plus stuff off the website. They've all been delisted. Uh, mainly things that are obviously H, like straight up that stuff. I can't say it because we're going to post this on YouTube and they got mad at my video, so I'm going to say H. You know what I'm talking about. 18 plus H stuff. And. Some stuff that's kind of in the middle ground there that are obviously questionable as well, like interspecies reviewers has been removed, um, and several other stuff. So that stuff is no longer allowed to be on the website because Sony owns them, and Sony thinks that that's inappropriate, even though they have way worse stuff in a lot of other Sony brand stuff. Anime is evil, so it has to be taken down. They have noted that uh, CEO Sean Kleckner and his team is going to be merging with Crunchyroll's business organization um, and... Yeah, that's uh, pretty much all we know. All the H stuff, 18 plus stuff, has been moved over to another site called EroAnimeStore.com. Um, apparently, people are getting notifications saying, hey, your your order's either canceled or it's been moved over to their site. I'm assuming EroAnimeStore.com is some sort of maybe a friend of Sean Kleckner or something. They they just The website itself is like, a splash page that says something's coming soon. We're 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 happy to work with Bright Stuff. I'm assuming this Wendy person that's listed on that site is probably knows Sean Kleckner, and they're moving everything to them. Uh, some people have speculated that it's probably so it would be Sony Crunchyroll's wanting to make another site that separates everything. I doubt that. There's no reason for them to separate to another store when if they're gonna have the store, they're gonna have it on Right Stuff. Why would you move it and cause controversy? But I, I'm I'm assuming it's probably somebody that they. They know that they're going to be able to move that stock too, so they can sell it instead. But um, either way, it's obviously not going over well because, <laughs> aptly enough, everybody's not happy about this. I think I've only run into one person, and they were just commenting on how overblown people are making this. But other than that, nobody seems to be happy about this. So I made two videos on this, and so I'm not going to talk too much. I'll give my points, but I do want to hear Chris's thoughts on. We all know what he thinks. <laughs> we all know what he thinks, but we want to hear it again, right? So, Chris, what do you think about this whole? What buyout? do I think? I I want to know what I think. So, um, this is one of those things that I I I think that um, if just just throwing it out there because I've been thinking about this for the last two weeks about this as or uh, week since since it was when Andrew brought it up to me. And, and I, so I really have to get this out of my system. I really do. Um, I think that Andrew had pointed out it's not technically censorship. And I, and I agree. It's not, it's not really censorship. And, keeping. Yeah. Just it, pulling, pulling stuff off of your, your, um, your website and sending it somewhere else. It's not really censorship. It's just a business deciding what they will and will not carry. Um, but here's here's my my biggest issue with this, um, because this is this is the thing that 
irks me to no end. If you are one of those people that are holding out, like Andrew had mentioned, somebody who's, this is blowing it out of proportion. Yeah and no. Um, because I, I do, I do think that every business has a right to decide what they will and will not do. If you don't want the business and what it has, the, which I think that pretty much Sony has decided we we're going to be making more money with the distribution than we will out of the few things that we're taking off of their site. Fine. Fair enough. But here's my issue. Um, you are buying, you bought this business, you knew what they had why would you take that off of the table? It's, it, and that's why I mentioned before, these, a lot of these people who are making these decisions have a, uh, a moral imperative to do what they're doing. Now, if you think that even that is not, well, uh, it's not so much whether or not they're taking the H stuff off of their, their website. The problem is not that. It's when do they stop? This is, this is what I, I keep trying to imply that I wish people would gather. It's not a matter of what's happening now. It's what will happen in the future. What if they decide, for whatever reason, too much blood is, 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 is unacceptable, and they take that off? What if they decide that um, Shogun Roku is a little bit too questionable for their taste? They subject pull matter is too heavy it's exactly the it's it's not a mat it they've already done it they have nothing stopping them this is what i'm trying to imply to people that i'm i'm, I'm emphatic about this it's not what they're doing at the moment this is what i we were talking about with the um the, the why i draw a clear distinction on the sub versus dub thing i could care less whether or not dubs exist i love dubs i think they matter subs or dubs it does not matter if the problem is is that they're changing things they opened the door that if, as long as you accept it it goes from there they can change it all they want because you've already given them permission they just go a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more when you push back then they go they wait a little while then they go a little bit more well you've already accepted it way back here why can't we do it now that's my thing that bugs me it's not a matter of whether or not they're doing it now it's what th will happen in the future this is the same problem patterns here. is really what we're always pointing out it, in history you, you take what history has happened and you say that's that's like the whole argument that we had when the when crunchy was bought by sony ever we were obviously pointing out and a lot of people were pointing out this is the same company that owns playstation and what is playstation which is now located in america doing they're tearing up the the gaming sphere with their censorship. And so it's like that aspect of we've seen it happen here. And so it's obviously going to happen here. It's look at what they've done and see the patterns. And of course, people make the argument, well, PlayStation's a separate branch of Sony. It's like, yeah, but it's all coming down from the top. <laughs> it's all yep. coming down from the top. And eventually it's going to come down for anime as well. It's, it's only a matter of time. It feels like there's a little bit more pushback in Japan on the anime side because it's literally it's it's core. Western gaming is so big that it's more easier for them to say, look, we need to start controlling this because Western's where the money's at. It's not the same deal with anime, but it's eventually going to get to that point. And that's when, again, you see that pattern will apply here. I do I do appreciate the fact that there is some people in the comments for some of the video the videos that I've been making for this. And they are there's some people that are going, you know, before I didn't really buy into this whole thing. I wasn't like anti Sony with this whole situation of them buying Crunchyroll and stuff. But now I'm starting to see that I don't like this anymore. I, I like that some people are going, yeah, I, I, I'm starting to see that this is a pattern, that they are literally making a monopoly. <laughs> they are literally making a monopoly. And you can't say they can't make a monopoly because Sony has big bucks and they're paying to, paying to certain people and that allows them to get away with this stuff. And they probably did that in order to buy Crunchyroll, saying, oh, well, no, there's these other competitors. It's not a monopoly. It's unfortunately there's corruption there, and so they were able to get through with that. This didn't surprise me that it would go through because if they got away with buying Crunchyroll, they're gonna get away with buying right stuff as a distribution company. Um, and obviously, they're gonna say right Amazon's right there. I mean, obviously, it's not a monopoly, but it is sad because it, this is like the premier site to just get anime, manga, light novels slash other merch, and now they have full control over it. And I, I, honestly, it 
it saddens me more than anything because I've loved Right Stuff for so long. I have supported them for a long time. We have a, we have a, um, I don't want to know what, I don't want, I don't want to use certain terms and dissuade people, but a lot of communication with them. Obviously, they send us a lot of stuff for review. And so me saying this is truly from a perspective of me really caring for that company as a great company of great people that I've enjoyed speaking with for a long time and working with for a long time. And now to have this happen, I feel like they're going to end up losing that that nature. Now, obviously, this, nothing's going to change for a while because buyouts, they usually try to figure out what's going on in the company before they start changing things. But I, I don't doubt for a second that eventually it's going to come to a point where I mean, I had I was trying to get a, an interview with Sean Collector before the, the the 35th anniversary sale, and they're like, "Oh no, he's busy with the sale coming up." So maybe after that, now I know why he was <laughs> being able to do interview. He was probably in talks for this, and so he's probably busy with that. But now I don't think I'll get an interview with him. I doubt, highly doubt, he'll ever give us an interview at this point. I don't think he'll give anybody really an interview besides maybe I don't know Crunchyroll he may. Um, he's gonna be he's gonna be locked up in some room in Sony for or Crunchyroll for a while. It's just sad, though. I, I, it, it breaks my heart, honestly, to see this. And as much as, like, like I said, the, the anger that people have for this is warranted. The uneasiness that people have for this is warranted. I, I still, at the same time, um, wonder how that is going to be portrayed to right stuff. Like Sean Kleckner, so he, he's been pretty much quiet ever since the buyout announcement. I wonder how they feel about this stuff. Is this... Is this something they expected? I, I assume this is what they were expecting because they waited until after the 35th anniversary sale. A couple days pass, boom, announcement. I'm like, no, you guys knew this before the sale. <laughs> and that's the funny thing that I was pointing out in one of my videos. Is like, well, you you knew this was a thing that's been working on for a while. At least a year. At least a year they've been talks with this. It's just we don't know about it until it's actually finalized. But you do know that they they probably wanted to, they, they, they probably had it solidified already. And this 35th anniversary thing happens, and like, hold off, don't don't tell anybody. Partially because they knew, I think they knew that people weren't going to be happy about this, and that would probably kill the sales for the 35th anniversary. But what was the other thing? Sony, again, Sony probably already had this purchase done. Why would why would they wait until after the 35th anniversary sale to sell that H stuff? <laughs> so if you think Sony is some sort of Prince Charming that wants to get rid of all evil things from us, why would they not do this before the sale and stop the sale of the the H stuff? Because Sony doesn't really care. They're just trying to look good. It's so bad. It's so bad. It, it just it just boggles my mind, honestly. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do I do question the idea that I again I'm not a lawyer, but I do question a company giving sales information and order information and customer information to another company without your consent. Cause they technically gave all this stuff to a quote unquote different company, arrow anime store.com. And it's like, but isn't that like a, isn't that illegal? <laughs> isn't that illegal to give your, just without just say, ah, we're just, we just gave all your orders over to them. Wait, that's my information. Why are you, why are you passing that over? Unless, I would assume, yeah, they would have to. They would have to move the purchasing, the the credit card information, everything too, unless they're going to ask you to re-enter your credit card information once the order goes through. I don't think that's a problem. It, once the transaction is done, it, it, it they would buy the they would buy the um, the purchase, not the actual account information. But now, there well, is, unless there's unless different, right stuff, different unless right stuff uh, finalizes the transaction once it's over. Because when you pre-order stuff, out-of-stock items That's with true. Right Stuff, it doesn't charge you. So they would either have to they have Right have Stuff to till charge you once it ships from this other store, or they're going to have to have the store go, okay, the order's ready. I need you to come to the site yeah. and put your information you in. You would have to do that. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't, you can't. They wouldn't be able to pass the credit a, card. <laughs> yeah, you can't sell the the, the credit card. All that, st all that stuff should be encrypted and not, they would they shouldn't be able to even touch it. Like yeah. they should, like right stuff shouldn't be able to get your information. It, it should be encrypted and not readable by them. But anyways, that's, I don't you're, know. You're, it's, you're purchasing the right, or you have the right to the pre-order. You don't necessarily have the pre-order is, is what you're saying. And, and yeah. that, that's different. Um, I do. I do want to throw in um, it just just so everybody knows. I mean, we, what 
one of the things that um, I'm predicting, I'm assuming Andrew probably predicts the same thing. Right stuff is going away. It, um, it is yeah. literally, and this is it'll become Crunchyroll. It's well, not. I think they'll. I think they'll still keep the name for a while, but I think like yeah, two years down the road, it's, it's going to be Crunchyroll stores. Well, I wasn't. I was. I was very surprised how fast they got rid of Funimation. Yeah, it, technically, it's still True. lingering around, but yeah. the the speed at which they knocked they quote unquote knocked out Funimation. I'm 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 blown away, and mm-hmm. and at the rate that they're going, this this will be gone within shoot by the end of the year as it stands right now. But when it comes, one of the interesting, they're really it really, and I think the it it speaks to the whole Funimation thing. It, the reason why we were shocked by the Funimation thing is because it was them they were able to double dip. But I think what what really that whole thing showed us, despite our prediction that it would take a while. It showed us that Crunchyroll under Sony's brand is Crunchyroll as a brand is trying to become this this thing. Like if you think anime in North America or in a lot of other locations in the world, you think Crunchyroll. It really does feel like they're really pushing to solidify Crunchyroll as a brand. This isn't Funimation. This isn't right stuff. These are Crunchyroll. And so it doesn't, it won't shock me, yeah, if that right stuff as a brand will shift very quickly here soon. They'll probably have a redirect if you go to rightstuffanime.com or something like that to crunchyrollstore.com or something like that. But yeah, I fully expect very quickly that store will become Crunchyroll. One of the one of the things that I I, I think it, I, I I'm and, and I'm not all negative on this. I think that this is actually in in some ways it's a good thing for Crunchyroll. I I despised, but we 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 did for a while try to buy stuff from Crunchyroll store, and they had a horrible system when it came down to it, and that that's something that right stuff will absolutely fix in a lot of ways it'll help them out uh to get that stuff out there and this is something to take into consideration we've talked about when when you watch anime what are you um what is the money in anime it's merchandise it's not the anime itself and so they're kind of in a way re 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 refixing a lot of that issue of getting that stuff from uh because right stuff has all those um pipelines all set up Crunchyroll capturing that and and incorporating it you'll be able to watch your anime and all the down at the bottom of there hopefully uh, if they're doing it right hint hint um, when you go to watch a show you, you'll have up at, uh, right over there to the side you'll it'll say you can get this character's figure for uh, $199.99 and you'll you'll have that passive um uh what what's the the term where you go through the the checkout line and the stuff is right there um there's a there's a term for it and and uh you'll have that with with Crunchyroll if they do it right if they set themselves up they could literally capture the essence of the impulse buy um so i i think it's it's not all bad it's just there's there's an issue in the whole quote unquote monopoly, which while they don't have a true monopoly yet, they're pretty much setting themselves up as a monopoly. Um, and it's going to be like Andrew had said, it's the one stop shop. Everything that you want is all right there. That we roll. want you to have. And which you forgot the second line, Chris, I was, I was helping you out. And this is something that I, I wish people would realize those who are defending this realize it's not so much about what they, they're technically doing what all of you have complained about for years where you said, well, Crunchyroll needs to be more. Con- well, now they're more convenient. Now what? I, I said several times we need better competition. That's why we need to be uh, supporting these companies like High Dive or um anime soul or uh, and yes anime soul went out this side uh daisuke they're they're pretty much to the side Retro when you crush. don't when you don't um support these these com- competitors now we're in the situation where what where else can you go and the sucky thing is like you support the competitors and then they get bought out yeah how long until high dive gets bought out honestly and again we that we've talked about that to death this idea that what was amc's original goal 
Was it to get into anime because they like the fans, because they've obviously dealt with the anime fans, because they don't they go to conventions with things like Walking Dead and stuff like that? Did they really want to get into that world? Or did they see Sony buy Crunchyroll and said, hmm, let's buy High Dive and build it up and see if Sony will buy it? Like, is it like an investment or is it a is it a future thing? Um, so what do you think about the whole I, I brought it up on my second video quite a bit. What, what do you think about the whole situation of what do you think the future is of competitors on Right Stuff? Right Stuff sells a lot of stuff for competitors, including, yes, Sentai Filmworks. What do you think? What do you? What do you? What do, you, do you believe that they'll at some point strong arm them to harm them? To give you an example, man, Sentai Filmworks bought up twenty licenses this season. They're really, I don't like these guys. They're they're taking away the shows that we're putting on Crunchyroll. They're licensing up all the stuff. Why do we sell their stuff on the RightStuffAnime.com? Our our distribution. Why are we selling their stuff? Our com our competitor stuff. Why would we sell it? They'll just drop them. Kind of like what happened when Sony bought Crunchyroll, huh? Mm -hmm. Something disappeared from Crunchyroll's website. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, there's <laughs> there there's no there's no getting around. Um, I I do find it interesting, like you were saying about the whole um, acquisition that just naturally comes of grabbing uh, right stuff. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Because you were talking about Nozomi and um, a couple of the other ones, in Critical the, Mass. Critical Mass. I think that that's a an absolute fascinating thing because that was that's technically almost hostile, um, because they are now effectively owned by Sony, which which are still in talks for. By the way, I don't want to mislead people. That I that's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. They bought right stuff. But it seems like their goal was to buy Right Stuff distribution. Now, it seems like even though Nozomi Entertainment and Critical Mass are supposedly under Right Stuff Anime as a company, it seems like despite the fact that they bought Right Stuff, they're still in talks about what they're doing with Nozomi Entertainment and stuff. Nozomi Entertainment has tweeted out saying that they're looking forward to working with Crunchyroll and Sony and stuff like that, but... It, they're still saying that they're in talks about what is happening with Nozomi Entertainment. So... That's the big question mark right now. And the only thing I can think of is that all they cared about was buying Right Stuff as a distribution company, and they don't really want Nozomi Entertainment. They don't want Critical Mass. Obviously, they don't want Critical Mass. I mean, they kicked, well, they, they, they kicked, might... they kicked interspecies reviewers off RightStuffAnime.com. They don't care about Critical Mass and their properties because they... they're usually H-Stuff. But why the Nozomi Entertainment, again, I don't think they necessarily care because they already have it. But I think the confusion that's happening is that technically Nozomi Entertainment works in the same facility as Right Stuff. It's the same staff. So what I think is happening is that they're trying – I think that what they're doing is they're trying to push um, Sean Kleckner and the ownership of Right Stuff to give it to them for like super cheap because they don't care about it. But they do technically want to have it in the same building. So if they don't buy Nozomi Entertainment – Sean Kleckner and all them have to figure out what are we going to do with Nozomi Entertainment? It can't stay in this facility. We have to buy a new staff or, or hire a new staff, order a new facility, move everything over to that new facility. And even then, is it going to be profitable enough because it worked under right stuff because they had all this other stuff, distribution and stuff. It's going to be too expensive if they do it as its own company. It, well, it might be legal framework as well. Like the properties that Nozomi Entertainment owns might technically not be able to just shift over um just like we were talking about with the uh funimation and the whole sentai stuff and and how there was that kind of murky area for a while it, until it was officially announced and then it was questionable and then they just yanked them all off it might be something similar to that where it's just the the legal framework keeps it from actually being announced that they are owned by them because if they are owned by um, Sony, then that that's a breach of contract and stuff like that. I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. Breach of contract for who? Uh, Nozomi Entertainment, because they're they have the rights to the the um to it until they adjust all the contracts, um, where they have to go back to Japan and say, look, we gotta we gotta. Well, that would be simple as them keeping Nozomi Entertainment as a functioning company. If they if that was the case, they would definitely run that with Crunchyroll and Funimation because those had way. Right. I mean, Nozomi Entertainment has like what twenty five shows. Again, that's why I don't think that they even care. I mean, they might like their team, but they already have those teams. Like 
them buying Nosy Entertainment would be strictly for the brands because they have the team, they have the audio team, they have the translators. And again, technically, Nosy Entertainment probably doesn't have many translator, and they probably outsource them anyways. But it's it's just a big question mark, honestly. There, but honestly, with the the whole Sentai Filmworks thing, I'm truly afraid that eventually it's going to come to a point where they're going to say, you know, I don't want these competitors on our platform. Kick them off. Or, yes, I've heard some people even speculate, do you think, and I can pose this to you because I've already answered it on my video, and I'll probably answer it again. What do you think the possibility is that this is a interesting way for Sony as a company and Crunchyroll to push High Dive into submitting themselves for sale to Crunchyroll by saying, oh, you sell a lot of Blu-rays on our website. Um, let's not sell them anymore just to bring their value down. That way they can buy them. Oh, Sentai Filmworks is saying they're worth this much. Well, if you don't have distribution anymore, then I guess you're not worth this much anymore. Oh, now we'll buy you. Do you think they, they would, do you think something like that could happen? Sure. I, the, the, the sad thing is, is that they're already strong arming, arming themselves already. I mean, what's, what's one more one more company that would fall to the wayside. It, that That's just what they're... I mean, this is... If you look over at the gaming side, they they are pretty much... They pretty much said it. And this is an interesting aspect of uh, the whole them acquiring right stuff. Right stuff will now be able to cross over into the gaming side as well. This is, this is a, a an absolute fascinating um they're gonna case a, study they're gonna need a bigger <laughs> warehouse yeah, they're, if, they're, they're, if they're already maxed out at right stuff's warehouse yeah. they're gonna need well they're, they're getting rid of a lot of the age stuff so i guess they have room for games it, it, there's the the this is a fascinating just case study on things that you could see um in in a general sense because the all of the things that they can cover now is just really really cool. Um, but at the same time, it, that doesn't mean that I'm like happy about this. I'm I'm very very ambivalent because I see a lot of issues as well as I see some really cool and interesting things. Um, corporate um, buyouts. I think which, stuff has been selling games, by the way, but they're mostly different, like NIS America games and stuff like that. Right. Hey, but um, to to answer your question, Sony is not a how do I put it? Um, they're not opposed to um, underhanded strong arm tactics. I mean, that's technically what they did with the start of PlayStation is um, they were working with N- Nintendo. Nintendo didn't like something and they said, well, let's go behind your back and do it anyway. And that's how they uh, the PlayStation was born. So it's not they're not opposed to underhanded t- tactics. So, yes, I see them if they really, really want um the stuff that high dive has they're not opposed to doing it i think that they have some really strong they would have some very tough things to work work against if they're going to go the direction with of going against amc but i don't see amc as that strong that they could honestly compete against sony so it's an interesting question for sure well the the the, i guess the direction that i took that whole conversation was that i I understand that they can manipulate the market with this because, again, this is their main distributor. If you look at traffic statistics for Right Stuff on the Sentai Filmworks listings and compare it to SentaiFilmworks.com's website, it's massive. Like, like Right Stuff mops the floor with the original Sentai uh, Filmworks website. But my opinion is more like I don't know what their statistics are on Amazon because even though right stuff can cut off sentai filmworks they can still sell their products on amazon and i'm curious i would be curious to know how much sentai filmworks sends to amazon versus sends the right stuff and i would assume that most of the general public probably buys on amazon now the the big huge thing that i think doesn't really sell me on the idea of right stuff having a lot of control to say we'll stop selling your stuff and you know sentai is going to go oh no we're ruined if you don't sell our physical goods is because I don't one I don't think that physical goods is as profitable as High Dive website. I think High Dive as a company or Sentai Filmworks as a company probably makes much more per show on streaming service, and that's what they're trying to push right now to build up their streaming service. 
that's much more profitable than, than them selling a Blu-ray for 20 bucks on Right Stuff. Because yes, Right Stuff is huge. Yes, they sell a lot of stuff. And yes, a lot of the, the, the draw to Right Stuff is that they have these huge sales. Well, guess what? Those huge sales aren't what Sentai really wants. <laughs> If, if anybody has been in retail and product development and sales, you know that sales are typically something to either draw interest of new customers or to sell a lot of stock for very little profit in order to get it out the door, to get rid of stock that you don't want or just to make a really quick buck at not high uh, profits. When you see a sell for a Blu-ray on Right Stuff for 12 bucks, they're not getting much out of that. They're going to make a buck. They're just hoping that you'll buy that other Blu-ray that's $60 currently at the same time. That's always how it's worked. It's not as if that's a good thing. Um, and that's what Right Stuff is kind of known for. Now, granted, you can go to Amazon and find some Blu-rays cheaper there than Right Stuff. I've had it happen several times. I, I, put, I showed a, a screenshot of one of them in my one of my videos. It's it's a thing. But I think like the Right Stuff as a company is for the big hobbyists the collectors because they can buy a lot of stuff for cheap. If you want to look at maybe I want to I want to assume that most general audience somebody that just watches Naruto their ticket for what they buy is amazon.com. They go to Amazon, they look up the the cuz they get free shipping there, it's quick and if there's a problem they can shit they probably don't even know what right stuff anime is. But still, it's not to discount what right stuff is, but I it just makes me believe that even if they do pull their stuff from the website, I don't think Sentai is going to go. Oh crap! Buy us, please. <laughs> it's it's not. I don't. I don't believe that that is that big of a market for them, and I don't think they're going to hurt that much. It is huge. Um, obviously, we've seen it with Faku. Faku has come on. Uh, I think Polygon uh, questioned them, and they're mad. Like, could you imagine? I was. I was. I asked Chris the other day because the assumption here is that Faku didn't know until we knew. And that's terrible. That is terrible business practice. That with with Faku, Right Stuff was their seller. Right Stuff was their biggest seller in distribution. And they literally woke up the next morning, found this announcement like we did, looked on their website, and yeah, seen that all of their stuff has been delisted from Right Stuff. I think that is absolutely terrible. Like, absolutely terrible. Like, it, Here's the thing, I, I would assume that if anybody at Sony were to contact Faku in the future saying, hey man, we want to make a new Eero manga web, uh, website and we want you to have your stuff on here. Like, how do I send you a finger vocally <laughs> through a phone? I think it's just terrible. It was a, it's just a, again, very, I want to say disrespectful, but just very bad business practice to, and again, this is me going based on what they said. It sounds as if they didn't know. And you would think that they would at least have notified them, hey, look, I know we're a lot of business for you guys. You need to find somewhere else to sell it through. Uh, obviously, the, Faku's already going to have all of their stuff at whatever avenue they can sell it from. So it's not as if they weren't already where they should be. But it's still terrible. It is still it's still a terrible move. And that's the whole issue with the anime store is that that place isn't even started yet. Like, it's just a splash page. <laughs> there, there's no functioning e-commerce stuff built yet and they're i mean they're working on it obviously but it's still like who 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 did this like who how how did you mess this up this bad like you should have had that other site ready to go honestly i think it would be less backlash if yeah there's still gonna be backlash because nobody's happy that sony is controlling so much stuff but it would be less backlash for at least the, the those products if that store was functioning like you literally could go there and go oh yeah it's all here still I'm fine. I can buy interspecies reviewers still, uh, but yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. I again, I don't. I I love right stuff, and I wish the best for them. This does technically make me wonder if right stuff was in a bad place. Like I I just feel like Sean Kleckner was always about the fans. I mean, I found a clip from A and N here recently, uh, and cast back when they had the announcement of Sony buying Funimation. And back then, when they were interviewing Sean Kleckner, he noted what we're all concerned about, that this buyout means that not just one company is controlling another company, but now the feeling of the fandom that was once in that company is going to be lost. The changes are good and bad. I mean, if you have a large company coming in, they're not as focused on 
the fan necessarily as when you had a smaller group of fans that were running the organization, for example. Uh, it has become more of a business-centric uh, environment than it was previously. I just don't feel like you're going to have that same passion out of right stuff that you did before. You're not going to have Sean Kleckner dancing around in a penguin outfit for sale. It's going to be business, 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 and what the big wigs want. And that's, that's sad. It's honestly, it is sad. It's, it's as if you're losing a friend, a family, uh, a fan at this point. I mean, how many times do we have them do a release just because they loved it? <laughs> the whole Captain Tyler thing was because Sean loved that series. They, as a company, went out, got the license, got all the materials they needed, everything because they had the passion for that product. And you're not going to see that anymore. And that's the sad thing that you're losing. So anything else? Pretty much where I would be going from this point is is just a hope. And, and, and that's, that's I think, a lot where a lot of us stand is, is we hope. Um, the, the aspect of... We keep we keep pointing these these things out only because we're we're concerned and and it it really sucks because I I, I had thought about Faku quite a few times um I, I I thought about J List in the in a lot of these situations because really what um what all the, the, the those two companies are they're they're the outliers and those are the ones that you hope for the the best situation for them but really what it comes down to is and, and w- what Andrew was bringing up and the the thought had crossed my mind is I wonder if if in a in in a lot of these situations maybe there wasn't a a situation where they figured that the those things would be yanked off. You have it, a uh, contact with was it Peter right? I think yeah. now would be a good time to have an interview with Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that would be and right now would be a really good time to have an interview with them. So since I'm not going to have my Sean Kleckner one anymore, <laughs> doubt that's happening. <laughs> It's it's one of those things that you kind of hope that that the the best kind of works out. Um, that hopefully this this other uh, uh, splash page is actually um, does actually work out for the best. It, it, maybe that was something of a spurned. Uh, one of the uh, employees was spurned, and he they started out their own stuff, or or this windy person just actually bought it out, and this actually works out for the best for them. You, you, there's, there's all these, these things that are up in the air that all we can do is hope for the best. And, and we keep, uh, throwing our words into the wind and hoping that somebody goes, you know what? I've got the money. I've got the drive. Let's do something with this. That's the, that's the thing to keep in mind is I, again, we've, we've already noted to death that I, I don't feel that right stuff is going to continue as it is. It is going to become eventually Crunchyroll store, and it's probably going to have a new warehouse. They're going to do all the stuff they're going to do. And again, I think, I believe, honestly, 98% that they're going to slowly remove certain things that they don't want on that website, and it's going to become a shell of what it once was. But the nice thing is, this is unlike streaming services, where... Yeah, you want another streaming service to pop up. You want another anime uh, company to pop up and do streaming service for anime and be a competitor. And it's always more difficult to think that they can do that because it costs so much to create a streaming service. But a distribution company is not that expensive to start up. It is well, much vastly cheaper. So there is this. This is what's so great about at least North America is that. What's going to happen is that I know that eventually somebody's going to pop up and say, we're the new right stuff. Come to us for everything. Manga, anime, and yes, H stuff. I do kind of, I was kind of hoping, and I, I kind of checked them really quickly. J-List is specifically imports. I would kind of hope that they, as in, you know, their distribution in North America, that they would go, all right, let's start bringing in Sentai Filmworks. Let's start bringing in Crunchyroll, whatever. Let's bring in all these brands to start selling their Blu-rays because obviously people want a one-stop shop. That's the thing. They don't want to go to write stuff for what they'll allow, and then they have to go to AeroAnimeStore.com to get their stuff, and they have to go to JList to get their stuff. They want a one place, a place that is like the fans again. What write stuff was and should still be. And and this is this is my case for and Andrew's joked about it a few times of me when I when I talk about a, a, a disruptor somebody who goes in and breaks things up. This is what I'm talking about when I when I mention that is somebody who comes in and shakes things up and and says, look, 
yeah, you're doing something over there that's really cool, but I can do it better. And they 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 flip everything on their head and and change the 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 way things are done. And that's that's what I'm talking about when I mention a disruptor. I'm not saying, you know, break down the stick it to the man and break down the the corporate system. No, I'm I'm talking about somebody who gets in there, finds that that niche because th- really what you're what what we're looking we lost at, the niche and now we have to recreate it yeah we, we're we what we're talking about right now is 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 when when people get frustrated they need a they need an alternative somebody that they can go to and and J list might be that 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 one that's going to um that to open up that door it, it might be um this windy person i i don't know somebody or somebody completely that's not even on the map right now looking at it and like i said has the pockets and has the drive and has the um the ability just not the resources it's just like um like i've talked about before i i can i know that there's a way to do this i don't have the the resources or anything but all you need is somebody who can provide the service it's a service all these things are services when i rant about uh funimation or or crunchy roll or all these some these things it's really comes down to what are we going to these companies for a service what is that service we have to figure out what that service is before we can figure out a way to bypass that service you if if you think that you're going to crunchy roll for anime you're wrong you are not going to crunchy roll for anime you are going for a translation service that's what you're going there for. What? How do you fix the problem of Crunchyroll having a monopoly on the translation service? Find a way around it. That's the problem. Nobody is thinking what is the service, and that's that's the thing. Is we're we're going to these companies because they hold the keys to the gate, and we're attacking them on the wrong gate. You need to find out what it is that they are doing. Find and fix the alternative. Change change things up. That's what we're all stuck with. Is we're all thinking that we're fighting this when we are actually fighting something totally different. But hey, that's my idea. My my two cents. <laughs> Down with the system. All right, we have tons of other ass news to get through. So I think a good hour discussion is enough. Uh, let's move on because again we technically have another one that might be heated but we'll we'll see but yeah some really crazy news that came out today as the recording of this podcast is that the official twitter account for ranking of kings has tweeted that they will be getting a new series in 2023 are you excited chris of course i love ranking of kings so sad news is though it's just one episode (laughs) I was I was trying to figure out how <laughs> how we got episode. series out of a special episode. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's like the good news is that we're getting more ranking of kings next year, but the sad news is that it's only one episode. It's called the Treasure Chest of Courage, and it will be airing on the Noitamina block as usual. And uh, yeah, the staff and cast, are, of course, are going to be returning for it. But I don't know. I I think the idea that they're even doing a special leads me to believe that there's going to be more, and that's that's the good thing. I don't see them doing a special unless they have some sort of whispers in the background. They're going to do a second season. So maybe this is kind of a a short story that was between the two stories. And so once we get past this, they'll go, oh, yeah, by the way, second season's coming. And that's that's super exciting. So despite the fact that it's sad news that it's only one episode, this, leads again, leads me to believe it's kind of like a Dr. Stone scenario where you have a season you have a special, and then you have the second season. So, or the next season, obviously. Doctor Stone's been going on for now. It's going to its third season here soon. So, yeah, that cool stuff. More, more ranking of kings is always good, even if we don't get another season, which will make me really sad. More is good because that series is absolutely phenomenal. If you have not watched it yet, it's literally writing characters perfection. It's just a fantastic series. So, and it seems like what studio loves this series. They it seems like they. Had a lot of passion behind it. So a lot of their art and exhibits have it. So, well, and and I, and I can only echo what Andrew's saying. Ranking of Kings, the only one other than that that I've seen such a attention to characters is is probably Jobless, and both of those leave no character un unused. Yeah. 
Moving on, the official website for The Fruit of Evolution has posted a teaser revealing the second season will premiere in January of 2023. So the show that only Chris likes, are you excited? I love it. I, yes. I can't wait. Chris loves this show because everybody hates it. It's another one of those ones. I'm just joking. Moving on, <laughs> the official website for Rising of the Shield Hero TV anime has revealed a new visual for the third season. Of course, we already had the announcement for the third season. I think the same time they announced the second season. Um, I, I think they announced... I, I, I honestly, at this point, believe that the only reason they announced the second season and the third season is because they wanted to do the third season and they had to get to the second season in order to get to the third season. <laughs> because, yeah, that was a crap show. Um, they have also revealed that they are changing directors once again because... Um, I don't know. Maybe they thought that the director did a terrible job with the second season. I don't know how you were going to pull that off good. So I don't blame the, the director of the second season. I blame them not putting enough effort into it, honestly. Um, but yes, uh, Hoto Hitoshi Haga will be doing the uh, the directing for the third season. He did storyboards uh, of a few episodes of the, fir the, second se the first season and uh, four episodes of directing of the first season. So maybe that'll be a good thing to kind of go back to the I don't know which episodes specifically done. I can probably look that up later, but it's good, I guess. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I The only thing that kind of has me a little concerned is that apparently they're doing the seven deadly sins. No, they're doing six deadly sins because it only shows six of them um, in this. The, the visual, they they, sh they show the, the deadly sins. So they're apparently doing the deadly sins thing. So anime loves doing the deadly sins thing. <laughs> so we'll see. The, the key art looks pretty dark looking ish, like a guy sitting in ruins. So there you go. Uh, I hope the third season does better. The second season was a mess. I want it to be good, like I've said before. Moving on, we have Square Enix. Did you know that they launched a manga app, Chris? <laughs> Did you check it out? No, I didn't look at it. Well, you, your 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 video said don't even bother. Don't so touch I, I this said, thing. Okay. Just don't and touch it. And then it pretty much shortly after everybody else was saying don't bother. So it was I mess. guess I probably won't bother. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously most of the offerings of Square Enix publishing, or at least their 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 licensing, is on a lot of different platforms. You can find My Dress Up Darling, High Score Girl, Soul Eater, Full Metal Alchemist. That's all their properties from Square Enix. Yes, Square Enix is a publishing company. Um, we've talked to death about the whole controversy behind High Score Girl, which was one of their properties that got sued and stuff because they had games in it. But no, um, they decided they want to do their own. Like, ah, let's let's get into this. So they made an app. <laughs> and so to give people an idea of what their app is, it's it's like Square Enix obviously does video games too. And it's almost as if Square Enix, who's obviously selling off other properties and going NFTs and all this other digital stuff. We're not getting into that discussion again. It's like they, they said, hey, um, our gaming side, can you make us an app for our manga? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. Because it's super gamey. <laughs> like, you turn on this Manga Up app, it's got stamina, it's got experience, it's got levels, it's got in-app purchases, it's got the way to replenish your energy so that you can read more. The cool thing is that the concept itself is pretty cool. Like, could you imagine opening up an app and you can read for free as long as you have stamina? And once your stamina depletes, you have to wait 24 hours for it to replenish. It's a cool idea because you're you're essentially able to read for free. And if you want to pay in... To read more, you can. The problem is that, for one, chapters are pretty short, <laughs> if anybody's ever read a chapter. And two, it's super gamified. And what's the biggest issue, Chris? What could possibly big the, be the biggest issue with this app, Chris? Do you want me to let you say it, or do you want me to say it, honestly? You could say it. Well, if you have another one, I would definitely love to hear what you think is worse. It, it has microtransactions. Oh, no, the censorship. <laughs> I already mentioned the transaction thingy. <laughs> Both of them are terrible. No, the, the the transaction thing is the worst because it's it's not very clear exactly what you're getting. Like you're buying, it's a gamified thing. And what the problem with games right now with microtransactions is they don't make it very clear about what you're buying. You're buying I, a token. You're buying energy to unlock things, and then they have apparently other things you need to acquire to unlock later chapters. It's very unclear, and the, it doesn't stay unlocked. Forever. That 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 bugged me. It, it, and when 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 you said that, I was like, my my jaw almost hit the floor. I was like, you what, you're renting, what? <laughs> you're essentially renting them. I that that I think is pretty is really really bad. 
Um, but yeah, the censorship thing, that, that's a whole nother ba- bag of worms. And, and, and that goes back into what I've said before of the, I, th- this is, this is one of those things I, I wish I could get a grasp on where the heck, um, is it because I've way, way back when I was, I was kind of, I, I want to say the other word, but I was complaining about this issue. Um, it's 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 really really frustrating because this is this is why I was complaining about it way back when and now it's 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 in our face. The people who were complaining about this the these almost puritanical uh, uh, no it wasn't from a certain group it was from another group and I was complaining about it then that. Stop. We, we're we're trying to get to a different place, and we want, um, we want what Japan is trying to deliver us. And these people were trying to enforce some kind of weird values that none of us agreed with on these these companies, and now we're seeing the fruits of it, where they are well, actually is, bending is... to these 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 ideals. That none of us want. We we're trying to get away from the Western uh, mindset to a Japanese mindset. We want what the J- Japanese are trying to sell us, and these freaking people that are up in these high high ivory towers are saying, "Oh no no no, you don't really want that. You want this." Now this is this is actually very worse. I'm gonna stop you there. This is worse. This is worse than that. Let me be very clear for people what happened here. So the stupid thing is that, and this is my assumption, is that they use an algorithm. Yep. They, they set some algorithm to go through all of these images of all of these chapters, of all of these panels, of all these manga, to find anything that looked like it was something inappropriate and cover it with a black bar. And it's like they didn't even go back and look because you had things like a boy's knee was censored because it obviously looked like a chest. You had this woman's... Uh, uh, pelvis was covered up who was wearing pants because the curve of it made them think it was something else that kind of stuff the reason why they're covering up so much stuff is because this is square enix move to global release they wanted this to be in as many countries as possible and there's certain countries far worse than the united states when it comes to censorship far worse these are people that want women to completely cover up their figure that's where they wanted this to be able to sell in and so they basically took the worst censorship country possible and they applied it to everybody that is the worst thing you can do (laughs) i said in my video whoever wanted to do this whoever signed off on this fire them because this this is the worst this makes no sense. Like this is a, the worst business decision I have ever seen in my life. And to release it with such bad press, even if you're going to backtrack it and fix it, I don't think they will because their whole, it seems like their thought process here is they want to have one version for everybody. And sorry, that is not going to sell anywhere, but possibly the, and wherever, and wherever you're censoring that much for those countries, probably not that popular. And so you're ruining it for all your big selling countries that are never going to buy your stuff. It makes it. This is the worst business decision I've ever seen. This it literally makes no sense. Who signed off on this? And and their response is, yeah, we're we're trying to make it available for all countries, and um, you can still find it elsewhere. Like yeah, piracy sites. <laughs> like yeah, sure, the heck yeah, we're gonna. And that was the sad thing. And this is something that I hit really heavy in my video. The sad thing about this is the reason why this is the the worst aspect of this whole thing. Yes, one is this is a spit in the face to all these artists, to all these mangakas that put this stuff together. Square Enix spit on their artwork. They spit all over it, and that's just disrespectful. The worst part, in my opinion, the other one, is this spit on everybody that wants to support you as a company that publishes this stuff. You can find any of these stuff on websites. You can watch, you can read all this crap for free on piracy sites. But guess what the pe- guess who th- Yes, there's a lot of people that downloaded the app just to laugh at it. 
But how many people downloaded this app to go, I want, there's a new way to support the manga I love. They downloaded your app. They went in there legitimately. They went by your system and you spit in their face with all these microtransactions, the gatekeeping of, of not gatekeeping, the, the time limits on what you purchase or what you open up, what you pay for and how much time you have to look at it. And yes, censorship all over the place. And you can get banned if you screenshot the app. <laughs> it literally tells you if you screenshot. Even if you screenshot like an information page, like um, I seen a tweet where somebody, I, I used their image from their, their screenshot because they didn't want to get mine banned while I was looking through it. Somebody tweeted that they got a notification that they will be banned if they screenshot when they were screenshotting the page that tells you about the information about energy, uh, replenish, replenishing time, that page, not the manga pages, not the manga panels, the information site, the microtransactions page. Um, yeah. Don't download it. <laughs> like, don't. Don't support getting your face spit on. And that, and, and that and that and that's that that's what what I was saying at, at, a while back when we were talking about a lot of the other things. It's like how many how many times can you? I mean, m- me and uh, me and Andrew uh, sticking up for a lot of these these sites for the longest time. And how many times are you going to basically rub our fa- faces in the dirt and and? expect us to keep uh sticking up for you it, it, it that yeah it, that's that's the frustrating thing is like at what point i at what point do we go we're done we we literally are done it, this is this is this is a bridge too far you, you've burned way too much it, we can't stick up for it anymore it's like why why in god's name would we go Sure, you can go and uh, go to the Square Enix app, and you can uh, pay money to to do this to get a censored version of the, which is basically effectively a poor rendition of the original mangaka's artwork for a translation service. It, what what what? In your right mind, and I'm talking specifically to Square Enix, to Crunchyroll, to Funimation, to Sony, whoever the heck you want to say, at what point do we go? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with sending my listeners to you. You, you're, you're rubbing my name into the dirt if I send it people to you because. I know it's not the best quality product because you're not providing it anymore. Instead, like Andrew said, you're spitting in our face over and over and over and over and over again. It, we're we're at the point where you're just kicking the dead dog now. It's like, what what do you want us to do? We can't in in our right mind say, yeah, keep pr- sticking up for the 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 uh, this garbage so that you can um support the mangaka it, it, you're not anymore you're not doing it you're not you're not providing a proper service in, to us anymore you're not sticking up for the you're really instead it, actually you are making the mangaka look bad because they're not pr- providing their proper uh product anymore because you're destroying their product they're, we're not even getting the product anymore. We're getting black bars. <laughs> well, those knees are very, very inappropriate. So. <laughs> no, I, I, that's I've had that several times. Like I get emails from certain companies. They're like, "Hey, can you promote this new thing we're doing?" Like I had this one that was for Kickstarter for people being able to make their own anime, and you could do these polls and stuff like that. And I immediately came back and said, "Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk about you guys." Uh, so, who's running the business? Like there was no information about who was behind this Kickstarter. I don't even know who to say. If you don't get what you pay for, talk to this person. If I can't see a name attached to a, a crowdfunding service, no, I ain't. I'm not pushing this at all. And I kept asking. They're like, "Oh, well, we have people that worked on Genshin." I'm like, "I don't care. Who, who's who's who owns this company? Like, I'm not going to put you in front of my listeners." And my listeners, I sound really bad. Uh, the people that enjoy listening to us and. Um, <laughs> And say support this or even look at this without knowing if this is a lie. I've gone through that plenty of times with services like 
anime tube. That was a big sham. That was a big, huge scam. And if I were to go into that without looking into it, I would be doing a disservice to people that trust me. I don't want to lose that trust. And to have something up, if I'm going to come on here and say, uh, we do that with High Dive. I, I, I keep pushing High Dive, please get better. Because I want to support you. I want to tell people to go to you. And it seems like they've been fixed here recently. But for a while there, they were having such a huge influx of people coming to their site because the whole Anime Expo uh, free month that they were doing. They were trying to get people on their platform. They have more licenses. And their site kept going down. And I'm going, I, I need you guys to say something because we're trying to push you guys. And if it keeps blowing up in our face where people come to us and say, I'm trying to support them, but their site doesn't work. It looks bad on me. I don't want that to happen. And Manga Up, I'll straight up say, don't touch it. Until they come out and say, look, we're going to be catering the censorship to the individual countries. I won't touch it. And I won't tell people to touch it. So, And I don't think that's going to happen because Square Enix has, I don't know who the hell, Square Enix is just, I don't know what they're doing anymore. I really don't. They've, they've, they've completely lost me. Uh, moving on, we have the official website for the TV anime, Our Last Crusade, or The Rise of the New World. Season 2 has been announced that it is a premiere in 2023, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I was okay with the first season, um, but it does need a second season bad, so we'll see if the second season fixes my issues with the show, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the official website for Sugar Apple Fairy Tale Anime has announced the series will premiere in 2023. So that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anything on this, so this was kind of a out of nowhere for me. But uh, they also re revealed a new uh, visual for the series, and the synopsis is: Anne Halford is a candy crafter determined to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a silver sugar master. That's an interesting title. A title bestowed upon only by uh, bestowed only by royalty. In order to travel to the capital and realize her dream, she purchases uh, she purchases Chalaye, a handsome but foul-mouthed fairy, as her bodyguard. Anne realize uh, Anne wishes to befriend her new companion, but in this kingdom where fairies are treated like property, uh, Chalaye wants nothing to do with humans. With the, will this in, uh, journey with Anne change his mind? Interesting. I didn't realize that he was going to be a fairy when I seen the PV. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's, He's a one-winged one, too. <gasps> oh, man. Do you see that? He's a one-winged. I, I, I seen the other fairies in the trailer, but they were, like, small, like fairies usually are. But he seems like he's big. So, again, and he, he seems like he has one wing. So he's obviously, maybe, some, yeah, I bet somebody chopped it off, and that's why he hates humans. Probably. I wonder if he, it, because he lost one wing, that's why he's human-sized. I don't know. We'll see. I'm Art curious. looks good, though. Art looks good. Very curious. Yeah, who was the... Did they say the studio? Uh, JC Staff. There you go. So it should be a good one. Should be a good one. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, moving on, we have Crunchyroll has announced at Crunchyroll Expo that Tower of God is getting a second season. Okay. <laughs> it's all you, man. I, we'll I got tired of it in the first season. I, I don't... Like, this is one of those ones where... and. All credit to people that are fans of it. That's fine. You can be fans of it. Um, it is one of those ones where, why this? <laughs> like, why this? I don't know. It, it didn't do well. It seemed like most people were pretty upset about it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the second season will be getting the good stuff. But well, if it, they could they could do God of High School instead. That one went into a train wreck too. <laughs> but at least it was visually good. But wasn't that was that Mappa? I think it was Mappa, wasn't it? I, I was gonna remember. I was gonna say if it was with studio, then it's not gonna happen unless Mappa takes it over. There you go, there you go. Tower God fans, have fun with that one. Katakawa has announced that Reborn as a Vending Machine Light Novel is getting a TV anime. This is exciting news. I was actually happy when I heard about this because this is like the most weird concept for an anime ever, and it sounds funny, so yeah, Reborn as a Vending Machine, I Now Wander the Dungeon light novel series. Uh, a middle-aged man with only one passion in his life meets a fitting end in a traffic accident. That's where most stories would end. But instead, this is where his story begins, where he is reborn as what he admired the most in life, Vending Machine. 
<laughs> but his new li uh, lease on life happens in the worst place possible. What can a vending machine do in a monster-infested dungeon when he can't speak or even move his on his own? Yeah, I think I, I think I heard about this one and the uh, reborn as a what was it the hot spring one? At the yeah, same that's time, what I was where thinking. It's like, how do you tell this story? It's it's got to be just a purely on obs observation. Well, th th there there was the three. There was this one. There was the hot spring one, and then there was the sword one. And it was like all three of those are kind of just this weird realm of. What the, the heck were you he, thinking when you, huh? I think the sword one he can talk, right? I don't know, but he, it, 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 they were all effectively inanimate objects, and yeah. whether or not they have the ability to talk is, it was the more, more the concept of what the heck were you thinking when you came up with this? But I, I'm very interested to find out. I have no. And um, I think those qualms the, with doing it. I think those are the worst ones too, because it always kind of falls in that realm of like, here's a really cool idea, but. Do they have anything beyond the first chapter? Like, that's the big question mark. But I guess we'll obviously see. But very, very weird. <laughs> very weird. Um, unfortunately, the PV that they have released hasn't really anything. So we'll have to wait to see how that turns out in animated form. He's He looks like a very cartoonish looking vending machine. So I'm sure he'll be expressive at least. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that one turns out. Exciting, though. That's, that's definitely one that I never thought we'd ever see an adaptation of. But... It did technically get pretty big for a while there, so it makes sense. Uh, during the Abungo Stray Dogs panel at Crunchyroll Expo, a new visual uh, was debuted to announce the fourth season will premiere in January of 2023. So all the Bungo Stray Dog fans look forward to that one. I am like, I don't think I finished the recent season, so I got a little bit of catching up to do. Um, I might just, I kind of wanted the time to rewatch from the beginning again because it's been... It's been so spraggly spread out, but yeah, Bungo Stray Dogs has a has a very passionate fandom behind it. I knew that when we were talking about our, uh, the previous seasons, it's just people, there's a, like, both fa male and female audience for Bungo Stray Dogs is very hype, so I'm very happy for anybody listening that are fans of that, that they're getting their, I knew that we had a season coming, but this soon is cool. It's happened, Chris. It finally happened after an entire, what, three years at this point of unknowns. Chainsaw Man <laughs> has finally got an official released month, which is October. So if October was not insane enough as it already is, now we have Chainsaw Man to look forward to. I think most people believe that it was going to happen. I mean, there was a chance that it was possibly going to get delayed, but we did know that it was supposed to release this year. Um, it was just one of those question marks of would it be delayed? And I think even Crunchyroll confirmed it here recently saying, oh yeah, we're going to stream it. Um, and it's going to be streaming this year. So it's like, well, if summer's already happening, it's obviously going to be fall. So yeah, as a, there's a massive amount of hype behind this one. And I, I hope it kind of lives up to that hype or if it just turns into being a crazy animation action flick. I, I don't know. There's a side of me that kind of wants to keep my expectations to, this is just going to be an action flick, a violent, super violent um don't know why sony's okay with this violence <laughs> super violence uh show but yeah pretty hype pretty hype so lots of screaming lots of cutting lots of blades coming through arms and faces and yeah mappa mappa being mappa hopefully they don't harm the the, the the animators and everything so already noticing some cgi in there too they're doing a good job of hiding it though but we'll see we'll see you excited? I don't know if I've gotten your take on if you're excited at all about this series. Not really. I only there's only one character I care to uh, look power? into. In the, huh? Power? Power is the one with the horns. Oh, I think no. that, I think power is the one that everybody's all like super hyped about. Like when when dress up darling was happening, everybody's like just wait for power. And I'm like okay. <laughs> Rize was the only one that I'm actually. I don't know enough about the other characters. I, I I've only just caught um, clips or pictures of uh, Rize, but that was all in Waifu game. I didn't know Power and all them were were part of the show as well. I haven't looked into it enough. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep. Cool stuff though. Really, really hyped for that. Um, I'm gonna keep my expectations. Settle down my expectations. I don't want to overhype it, but I think based on just animation alone, it's gonna be hype. So, it's 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 all right. But yeah, October this year, 
look forward to Chainsaw Man amongst 50 million other shows that are absolutely insane. But yeah, the official Twitter account for Toe Books has announced that Sweet Reincarnation Light Novel is getting a TV anime. So uh, tons of new stuff coming up here. This one is Pastry, uh, I hate this name, Pastry Mille Mortilne, age nine, <laughs> is both his father's heir to the re- uh, and the reincarnation of an unfulfilled pastry chef. While his dreams, uh, he dreams of a land filled with sweet treats, there's a lot to be done first. From learning how to fight, to controlling his new magical talents, to doing his best to defend his village from bandits, and yet all he wants to do is bake his perfect apple pie. Pastry Mill and Martin Lin Lin Lin, uh, has his work cut out for him in Sweet Reincarnation. So, there you go. No date or anything like that set for it. Just announcement for the for the uh, the anime adaptation. So, if you're looking for, I guess, the parallel world pharmacy, but Sweet's version of it, here you go. <laughs> the reincarnate starting reincarnate reincarnating uh, skilled person at one thing and doing that is seem to be a big thing right now. So, yeah. Uh, world's finest assassin parallel world pharmacy all that kind of stuff so there's your new there's your new isekai spin-off hype going on now so there you go there you go uh hifumi shobo announced that the chronicles of an aristocrat reborn in another world light novel is getting a tv anime adaptation this is going to premiere in spring of 2023 so we already have a date set for it it's being done by emt squared and magic bus uh, the and after the, dying in the uh, in the act of stopping a crime in modern Japan, uh, so reincarnated as a slime. Our hero is reincarnated as Cain von Silford, third son of a noble family in the world of sword and sorcery. In his new life, all the children receive blessings from God, but Cain is unexpectedly blessed with the absolute enormous, over the top, cornucopia of magic powers. Big shock. If his dream of traveling the world as a free spirit has come true, he can't reveal much about his potential to the wrong people. Okay. A lighthearted escapist adventure in another world begins. Like, the the biggest argument I had about this show is, like, can you make the most blatantly generic synopsis ever? Like, at least point out something in the synopsis that's different about this to everything else. Saying that he's reborn in this world has superpower is overpowered and that he's hiding it. They all do that. What else? <laughs> like we always look for the what else. But the synopsis not tell me what else is really kind of bugs me, so we'll see though. We'll see. Are you excited for that one? You always excited for Isekai's, guys, cute. right? Yeah. I, I actually am pretty pretty on board with Isekai's, guys, so yeah. I'm I'm a I'm I'm kind of dreading when they're gonna actually burn it all out, so Eventually. Eventually. It will be burned out. There's no doubt about that. Eventually. Kodansha's Young Magazine Twitter account has announced that the TV anime adaptation of Under Ninja manga will premiere in 2023. I think we talked about this one when it was first announced, but I think it's been pretty quiet since then. But now we have an official year that it's going to be releasing. So that's cool to know. I've been looking forward to that one. The official Kaiju number eight manga Twitter account has announced that the series will be getting an anime adaptation. Uh, this one is a man working uh, a job far removed from his childhood dreams gets wrapped up in an unexpected situation, becoming a monster. Or kaiju. Uh, he aims once again to fulfill his lifelong dream, which I'm going to assume is being a hero. But I don't know. Maybe it's to destroy the world. <laughs> maybe that was his original dream. Was it, I'm going to assume it's probably to be a hero. We all have the, that moment in our young young in days that we want to be a hero. I didn't really, honestly. I didn't. didn't at all. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on, we have the official website for the Ice Guy and his cool female colleague manga has released a teaser for an anime adaptation. This one is, it also revealed that it is going to premiere in 2023, so not too far away. Uh, this one, the workplace fantasy romantic comedy revolves around Himuro-kun, a modern-day descendant of the Snow Woman from Japanese folklore, and his seemingly aloof, eccentric, yet kind colleague, Fuyutsuki. Himuro-kun uh, tends to freeze nearby objects or summon a snowstorm when he's uh, agitated, and he also happens to have a secret crush on Fuyutsuki. However, Fuyutsuki is nearly completely oblivious to anything around her. So. I absolutely love this one. This is, the concept of this is just absolutely perfect, and I, I, I'm so, so excited about it. 
poor guy can't even enjoy a cup of coffee, probably. <laughs> yeah, it, technically, I don't think we've ever... I think we had one case where we had an anime where it had, or a story that had a male uh, ice uh, snow woman kind of thing. But uh, it sounds kind of interesting, that, that concept. She looks she looks great, so... Uh, the visuals of the of the trailer so far look really fantastic as well. So, is it um, who is the studio? Zero G, yeah, Zero G. So cool stuff, cool stuff. Looking forward to that one. Uh, let's see here. Avex has announced that the Dangers in My Heart manga is getting a TV anime adaptation. This is a premiere in 2023. Uh, this one is Ichikawa Kyotaro is a boy barely clinging to the bottom rung of his school social ladder, secretly believes he's the tortured lead in some psychological thriller. He <laughs> spends his days dreaming up ways to disrupt his classmates' peaceful lives and pining after Ana Yamada, the class idol. But Kyotaro's not nearly the troubled teen he pretends to be, and it turns out Ana's a bit odd herself. I've heard, uh, at least from our, our Discord, a few people mentioning that this is a a, a really popular one. So I'm not, I'm, quite, I'm not quite sure why it's escaped my <laughs> my path of vision for so long, but definitely sounds like an interesting concept for the synopsis. So I'm kind of excited for that. I don't think we have a studio yet for this one because it's just got announced. So we'll have to wait to see who takes this on. Cool stuff, though. Cool stuff, though. Uh, the official website for more than a married couple but not lovers anime has revealed that uh, the series will be premiering in October. Yay, another October anime! Uh, we've talked about that one quite a bit, so interesting to see that they finally got a, a release date for it. I don't even think it had was it, it was announced for this year. I think it was just legit. We're ad- adapting it, and finally we have a, a date. For I it. do, I do love the fact that it seems like they're actually trying to be more open about their plans so they're they they seem to be getting these the announcements out a little bit earlier i do like that probably because they're having to deal with the stupid leaks (laughs) yeah right (laughs) probably because the stupid leaks might as well announce it because somebody else is going to end up leaking it out who is going to do it this time uh yeah the official website for the tv anime adaptation of chain soldier has revealed that new design for the characters and a premiere date of 2023 not really a date, more of a year, but um, yeah, looking for that one. That was uh, I don't know what what it's like the the release of the information for the character arts. Like yeah, I kind of got well, I didn't get the guy, but the girl, I got a idea of her character design from the key art they originally released. But uh, the the important thing here, obviously, is that it's a premiere of twenty twenty three. So cool to know that. Cool to know that. But, yeah, looking forward looking forward to that one. That was the one that was I think the yeah, Kami got killed. Yeah, author. So. Yeah, Chris will probably avoid that one. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if Chris will jump into that one. There's there's always a chance. There's always a chance. Uh, the team behind "Can I Make Your Ears Happy in 180 Seconds" is back at it again. Chris, are you excited for more ASMR anime? Uh, we will see. Did you even watch? No, the I last never did. One? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like you had to like find it on YouTube somewhere. It wasn't really available anywhere, which was kind of unfortunate, but. Yeah, their new original TV anime from the same team is Caught Between a Yuri Relationship, My Life After I Became a Dummy Head Microphone One Morning. What a title. But yeah, I I, I, I guess just kind of taking the same concept as the other one, but just kind of throwing the fact that he's going to be a dummy head microphone amongst Yuri girls. So um, a bunch of girls that are all over each other and he's apparently listening to it or seeing it. I don't know. But I guess technically with the 180 seconds, the... You were the dummy. You were sometimes the dummy microphone, honestly. But the perspective of the dummy microphone, this one's going to probably have a character. It seems like he's going to have a character sitting there because it's obviously reborn as this thing. I I just hope that this team figures out the ASMR thing because as, as I kind of mentioned when we when I reviewed 180 seconds, is they half the time weren't recording in stereo with the characters. It was just the the sound effects were what they used it for and honestly it was mostly ear cleaning i understand that in japan ear cleaning is a a, it's a big thing it's very popular there obviously because their asian ears 
from what I understand, have a lot of issues with flaking rather than earwax. And so cleaning out the ears is something that's very uh, soothing. So obviously they're going to do more of that, but hopefully they'll do other things as well this time around. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. I'll give them a second chance. <laughs> At least record the dialogue in stereo. We, we're, we're finding out that Andrew has a thing for ASMR. I just, I have a fascination with weird anime. That's all. <laughs> just have a fascination with weird anime. I don't, I've, I've only listened to like one ASMR thing, so. All we need is to get a giant girl to, to clean Andrew's ears and, and speak softly into his ears so that we, we, we'll have him set forever. He has some pretty solid seiyus last time. Hopefully they get some more uh, solid seiyus this time around too. Maybe Aoyuki. Rita Takahashi does it all the time, so get her involved. <laughs> and now Toyama please now Toyama now Toyama please I'd be happy I'd be very happy anyways there's there's your ASMR anime no no dates or anything um oh no it's it's going to be on in this this October so it's right around the corner sorry so we won't be won't be very long before we find out if it's a a fail or not uh, the official website for the anime adaptation of Urasai Yatsura has announced the first season will run for half a year without breaks. So we kind of had an idea that their original plans was to do a full year um, adaptation. So it looks like they're now saying, hey, we're going to have a we're going to have a gap. So they're going to do half a year gap and then another year. So uh, kind of unfortunate, but kind of expected. I was I was assuming that, that was probably going to be the case, but there you go. There you go. Still looking forward to that, though. Really super excited to see Urusa Yatsura coming back. Um, I think even um, here recently, was it Discotech? They announced they're actually releasing the original TV series, so that's really cool as well because they've been basically just doing the movies, which is fine because I think that's where most people found out about it. But cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, the official website has been open for an anime adaptation of Classroom of Heroes, um, which is an adaptation of the light novel. Uh, the listed uh, this has been listed as 2023 premiere, being done by Studio Actus, and this one is set in Rosewood Academy, a school that trains future heroes destined to protect mankind. The school accepts only those with the most potential. Arnest Flaming, a girl who boasts the top record in the academy, is assigned to guide a mysterious but cheerful new student named Blade, who rivals her own power. On board. Pretty excited. It's got we got the return of the Magic Academies. There's a couple of them that we're gonna mention here in a minute um, that are back to the. Uh, we we had kind of a big period of time where it was nothing but Magic Academy anime, and then went to Isekai. Maybe this will be how we kill Isekai off. We we'll go back to Magic Academy. <laughs> we'll see though. We'll see. Cool stuff though. Cool stuff though. Uh, let's see here. Moving on, we have uh, official website for the second season anime of Another World with My Smartphone has announced a spring 2023 premiere. There's another one that Chris is the only person that enjoyed it. <laughs> so he gets an, two shows announcing its premiere dates for his his love. Now, I'll, I'll probably go back and finish the first season. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if my thoughts on it will change now that I've if you didn't care for smartphone, you probably won't care. Or um, fruit, you'll probably not care for this one. It, it was just goofy hijinks. The, the, and what I've watched of this first season, it was nowhere near as bad as Fruit of Evolution. <laughs> I won't go back and finish Fruit of Evolution. I could possibly go back to finish this one. Fruit of Evolution was just the humor and everything else was just not working for me. Yeah, this was just excuse to have OP main protagonist and a harem. I, yeah. I, it didn't really do much of anything else. Outside Case in of that. point, hit, well, I mean, that's just like the uh, the death march is like you look at the key art and you're like, that's a lot of girls. <laughs> like that, that's like every episode. Let's just get a new girlfriend for his character. It's kind of like Don Machi. Every season, he gets a new girlfriend. Um, doing it again this season too. Yay! Every season, I have to focus on a new girlfriend. But no, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, the official website for Handyman Saito. Uh, in Another World anime adaptation has announced that it's going to premiere in January of 2023. So pretty excited for this one. It sounds really like a really goofy concept. Uh, being done by Studio C2C, uh, Saito is an ordinary handyman who is reincarnated into Another World. He forms a dungeon exploring party with Railza, a beautiful and strong warrior. Morok, a powerful magician who, due to his senility, keeps forgetting spells. And Lafanpan, a cute but miserly fairy. 
His handyman experience is helpful when it comes to uh, opening locks and fixing armor. So looking forward to that one. Seems kind of goofy. So there you go. Just a just a hardworking handyman, blue collar guy trying to f- navigate his way through the dangerous Isekai world. It's not going to be that dangerous. I, I, would, I don't think it's going to get dark. Excited for that one? Actually sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, official website for anime adaptation of Alice Gear Aegis mobile game has revealed a 2023 premiere. Uh, this is, of course, based on a video game um, where girls uh, known as actresses battle mysterious machine life forms known as vices. Mobile game adaptation, whatever. <laughs> uh, tons of news came out of Natsu no Gaku and Sai 2022 event. We had the announcement for an adaptation of the Demon Sword Master of Alex Excalibur uh, Academy light novel is getting an anime adaptation. This is being done by Passione. Uh, Awakened in mag- uh, magical stasis after a thousand year, Dark Lord Leonis suddenly finds himself in the body of a 10 year old boy. He quickly meets Resilia, a girl confronting the voids, creatures uh, that have nearly extermin- exterminated man- mankind. Determined to uncover the mysteries of the strange new era, Leonis enrolls in Excalibur Academy. There's another magic school. <laughs> a school that trains students to fight back against the enigmatic monsters. Uh, could uh, could the voids hold some sort of connection to Leonis's past? <gasps> There's a mystery at the end of the synopsis. I like that. Thank you for throwing in something that makes it unique. If there's a threat to mankind, just, just throwing this out there. If there's a threat to mankind and you've gotten yourself into a corner, starting up a school is probably not going to help. You got to train them. Yeah, you can train them, but not in a special school. Oh, you're you're thinking like Seraph the Inn where they suddenly sit inside of a classroom and learn about stuff. (laughs) They they could just be learning fighting. It's, It's one of those things. It's like. Okay, I get I get the concept. Uh, you're you're right. Like you're saying they're training and all that. I got that. But having an academy is not going to work. It just is not. Um like maybe a a, a boot camp or something like that. Yeah, you can you can do training, but an, an academy is just not going to happen. Your 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 resources have got Chris is so mad about this. <laughs> Why is Chris so mad about this? No, it's just, it's just, I, 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 he sounds he's like one of those, when, it sounds like me when we were doing our first impressions of Sarah of the end. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I, I, it, it's just suddenly kind of at some point, it's like, why would you build up a, an entire academy and, and, and make a, make an entire, um, uh, faculty and, and pump money into a thing and, and buy uniforms. And meanwhile, dudes on the outside dying to a zo- the zombie horde, but yeah, you know what? We've got the school, so we're good. <laughs> so mad. He's so mad. <laughs> No, I understand that logic. It's th- this, like I said, I, I joked about with Seraph at the end, honestly. So, anyways, uh, additionally, they announced that uh, Days with My Stepsisters light novel is getting a TV anime adaptation. I've joked this is basically modern as my sister, because the girl looks just like modern from My Dress Up Darling. So, yeah, um, this one is uh, the novel centers on Yuta Asamura. Uh, whose parents gets remarried when he is in high school, and he gains a new beautiful young stepsister, Saki Ayase, a modding. Uh, Saki is also number one student in her grade. Both of them have some knowledge in male-female relationships through their parents, and in order to not cause discord in the family, they agree to be not too confrontational, but not too compromising either. With a moderate moderate amount of distance between them, Saki is starved for familial love, but repeatedly tries to be alone. And Yuta is bewildered at how to be a proper older brother. They gradually learn to become comfortable with each other. Again, it's basically Modern is my sister, and I'm getting attracted to her. Right? <laughs> it sounds almost like the one that's going this year, this season too. The step. Oh, my step- stepmom's daughter is my my sister. Or my step, my stepmom's daughter is my ex. Yeah. Well, it, but they're not, and they've never been in a relationship before. So, but yeah, it's a similar idea of older, 
not blood related becoming siblings kind of thing but just not having a prior relationship with each other so there you go i don't know it, it might be wholesome it could it, it's gonna it's not gonna be wholesome <laughs> it never is <laughs> If you have a Japanese story about two people being siblings, just being siblings, it doesn't have to be now siblings or anything, it's going to turn inappropriate. It, it always does. If you don't know that, they could be Every completely and totally time, wholesome. I, I'll welcome it to be unique. Not that it's bad, that it's not wholesome. Just I'll welcome it to be unique like that. Uh <laughs> Also, at this event, we had an announcement for Sasaki and Peep's novel getting an anime adaptation. This one actually got, this has my attention very much so. Obviously, the initial thing that captures me is we have the um, the artist behind, like, Kaneko and stuff like that, which I absolutely love their work. What was their name? Kantaku. Kantaku is the artist for the original series. They've done a key art for it, which is, again, I love their art. Uh, the other interesting thing that I found out later was that Aoyuki apparently is going to be voicing Pichon in the series, which I always love getting more Aoyuki. Uh, but no, the synopsis is what kind of, <laughs> kind of got me. <laughs> Even though Sasaki's droll corporate life is constantly filled with work, it leaves him tired and unfulfilled at the end of the day. Then the call of the night. I'm joking. Um, in search for some companionship to fill his empty life, uh, he visits a pet shop on a whim not realizing he's about to change his life forever. After setting, uh, settling on an adorable bird and bringing it home, his new roommate reveals that he's actually an incredible sage from another world who promptly bestows Sasaki with supernatural powers as well as the ability to cross between worlds. All Sasaki wants to do is use his newfound powers to live in peace and comfort, but there's more to a new, uh, more than a few colorful characters who might get in the way of that. Seems interesting. Oh, Yuki popped up in uh, Ars Notoria, too. Mm -hmm. Stood out like a sore thumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds interesting. Looks good, looks good. Really, really interesting, this one. I don't think we have a studio or anything yet. Uh, very early announcement, but um, surprised they have voicing, but not studio yet. But I guess I guess if they have some sort of pre-established relationship, they could they could set that up. But yeah, super excited for that one. Definitely looking forward to it. Again, based on the art style, Aoyuki, goofy synopsis, um, definitely should be, hopefully turn out to be really good. So, uh, additionally, Detective Arya Dead is getting a second season adaptation. <laughs> uh, this is another one like why, just why? I'm sure again based on what what people say, it's a lot to do with the adaptation, but. It's one of those ones that I think I believe at the time just didn't really do as well as I thought it should based on the hype that was behind it. But it had a really good first episode. Good luck with that, Andy. No, you I didn't it. finish the you first season. You got it season. covered. I didn't you even, got it covered. I didn't even finish the first. I think I got like three quarters through it, too. I just couldn't do it anymore. Or did I finish it? I don't remember. I think I just blocked it from my mind. <laughs> I only watched a few episodes, so. I got pretty far into it. I don't remember if I finished it, though. I got to the idol girl, and that was about it. Yeah, I got into the point where he started getting into his training and his past sensei and all that kind of stuff, so... Or, at least her, but, yeah. Anyways, second season, Detective is already dead. I'm excited for all the fans out there. I'll, I'll say that every time I'm always um, off on something. The official website for a record of the strongest on Myoji um, is reincarnated to another World Light novel, has announced the series will premiere in January of 2023, so... Exciting news there. We've talked about that one when it was first announced for the adaptation, so good to know that we have a date. Shueisha announced the Dark Gathering manga is getting a TV anime adaptation, and this one is... Synopsis is the manga centers around Keitaro Gintoga, who is has the ability to, as a spirit medium. I'm reading the other one. No, that was right. Um, in junior high school, he got someone wrapped up in spirit possession incident, and has been a shut-in for more than two years. As he reintroduces himself to society and um, society as a private tutor, he meets a genius girl named Yayoi Hozuki. Yayoi is instantly able to tell that Kitaro has a skill of a spirit medium, and she invites him to go with her on a haunted location, to a haunted location. The two then start their journey capturing evil spirits. So, cool stuff there. It's currently going to be premiering in 2023, done by Studio OLM. I'm not sure if I announced that or mentioned that, but cool stuff. Excited for that. 
The staff of Love Flops Anime Project has uh, revealed a promo revealing an October premiere. So another show for October because we don't have enough of those. Uh, this one was kind of funny. I actually checked out the the PV for this one. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. It, it it's kind of one of those ones where just based on the PV, I I instantly want to check it out. Um, but it's also one of those ones where, as I think about it more, it's one of those will this have anything else <laughs> like it it obviously has a grabber of a of a start and then it's like but beyond that is is going to be the big question mark the synopsis is the anime sitters on asahi kashigawa uh, kashiwagi a student who one morning runs into a series of unusual incidents on his way to school all in accordance to a vague television fortune he watched that morning and all com- culminating to the unfortunate encounter with a girl coincidentally all the girls he meets are new students or teachers at his school. Asahi's prior knowledge of the girls earns him suspicion of Yoshio, a self proclaimed friend of Asahi. Uh, after school, he finds a love letter in his shoe locker telling him to come to a cherry blossom tree behind school. Again, according to the morning fortune, Asahi uh, heads to the cherry blossom tree to see what awaits him. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, it very, very harem like there's just tons of girls that want him um but the funny thing that came from like the pv is that they have this point at the very end where he's holding what he thinks is like her um her tissue or her her napkin oh and gosh oh boy. <laughs> she like confesses to him or something like that and then suddenly uh he's shocked by this and he lets it go and it gets blown by the wind and it obviously turns out to be her underwear and then her skirt gets flown up too so it's like what <laughs> Like, why do you think that wasn't <laughs> tissue? But secondly, it's like, okay, pretty wild, st- pretty wild PVE, but at the same time. I am I so really on board in this. I want to watch this so bad. <laughs> it's like a pretty wild PVE, but at the same time, it's like, I, I hope it has legs. Um, Obviously, it has legs, Um, <laughs> actual legs for the story. Pretty, pretty crazy PVE, though. Check that out. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for that one at all. I want to watch it so bad. And sadly, to leave on um, some sad news, but something that does need to be mentioned, is Redice Studio has announced that the manhwa artist Dubu has passed away. Um, this is due to a cerebral hemorrhage from a chronic illness. And of course, for those that do not know, Dubu was the artist behind the uh, manhwa adaptation of Solo Leveling. So I'm um, sure that was something here recently that Chris has read through, probably a very much so known i mean that series i think for most people that i've heard from that have got into it was because of the art um it was yeah. because of dubu's art so very did you, unfortunate did you see the the girl that i was uh telling you about in there you showed it to me at some point yes yeah she's uh the 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 artwork in that sh- that story by far that that's easily the one thing that i can say it has in spades is some fantastic artwork it looks fantastic great yeah, yeah, yeah we are way over our usual discussional time but i don't want to not do i blame it i blame it on question. i blame it on crunchyroll and uh and sony and <laughs> blame always blame sony damn it roberts just damn it roberts that's well we could that. just go with the with the st- stock and and say damn it roberts yeah for yeah, sure damn, damn it roberts it's always damn it roberts um get your damn it robert mug at shop.tuckspear.com it supports us <laughs> We need, get, we need to get. We need to get. I. I. A. Uh, I generally love drinking out of this mug. Is that, that isn't that probably like copyrighted by somebody? I by me. I've seen those ones. Obviously. Oh, you. Gen- oh, the the generally joke. I get you. 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 Um. Once again, I'm scrolling around through to find actual questions because people are bad. We might do a mailbag episode next week because we are getting a little behind on a lot of stuff. So. 92 Mike says, don't you guys think that Crunchyroll should have a major update to fix player audio display amongst other things? Yes, always. But again, this goes back to what we discussed at the beginning of the podcast. This is what you have when you have one big contender is they don't fix things because they don't have somebody to compete against them. Um, Currently, right now, their competition is High Dive and sort of Netflix and High Dive has their own issues, so... Um, but, yes, technically, any issues with their site should be fixed. I was joking the other day that technically they have a picture-in-picture option for their browser, and it doesn't even work 
with the subtitles. So it's like, why even have this option when it doesn't work? Mm-hmm. Lastly, do you guys think that there uh, that the way some share opinions of certain topics in the industry, whether it be you guys or others, go from being simple opinion to becoming a this is a standard uh, the standard no type of redirect that others take? So are you meaning when we believe that something is this way because of this issue that it becomes the standard no because we believe it to be? Is that is that what it's asking? I don't know. That's uh, I, the wording of the question implies um and, and this is I if if I'm going based on what I I'm gathering what you're saying. Um I've talked about the idea of an avatar um which in a way and, and every time I say this, somebody always pops up and says, no, your opinion doesn't. No, I'm not saying everybody who listens to me. I'm not a reflection of everybody. It's, it's generally people are gathered to somebody that they are most of the time in agreement with. And that this is why it's a complicated. The avatar idea is a is a hard one to explain. This is why what we say does kind of matter, and they should be listening to people like us. Um, Opinion, not opinion makers, but um, um, people who are the the mainstays like uh, you can name off a few names um, and and generally they're the main ones that everybody goes. Yes, I know who that is. Um, at some point, a a person who is commenting on it for a while, and yes, we've been doing this a while, we, we have built up a follower base. That follower base, while not always are going to agree with everything we say, they are gathered to us for a reason. Those are usually a reflection of, Whatever we say is technically a reflection of what our listeners agree with. And so when we say something, it is kind of a general idea of the people that are listening to us. So, meaning, it, it behooves Sony, um, Crunchyroll, um, these bigger corporations to listen to somebody that has built up a certain amount of, for lack of a better term, clout. I'm not, I'm not saying clout. I'm saying that we have built up a reputation at a certain point. So when we do say something, that it should be a reflection of the people who listen to us. It's not always going to be, but it should. Um, why does that matter? It's just like if you were to go on to and some main newscaster on in the the world of media somewhere. Those newscasters are a reflection of the people that listen to them. Um, the the big radio hosts, they're a reflection of the people who listen to them. Um, so when they do say something, more than likely there's a lot of people who agree with them. Now, at the same time, those people have a lot of sway over those people. Meaning, if radio ca- the radio host say, uh, says, I should, or we should, as a listenership, do this, they have a, a, a certain amount of sway over those people. A lot of um, podcasters should have some sway. They're not going to have absolute sway. Do not get me wrong. There's a lot of people who have their own opinions and they're going to do what they're going to do. So it's it's one of those things. It's a give and take relationship over the the listeners. And so, yes, get, getting back to what you're saying, should there be a um, an opinion, the opinion that, that the influencers have Should they take that? Yes, they should. They should at least listen. Not necessarily do they need to adjust. Not necessarily. Because I don't know the inner workings of Crunchyroll. But they should 
at least heed what we're saying. When I when we say you're stepping all over your audience, you're not listening to your audience. This is what I'm talking about. They need to pay attention. They don't have to reevaluate reevaluate the entire thing. But when we keep talking about the same things over and over and over and over and over and over again, and they're still going and doubling down and tripling down and quadrupling down, at some point, like I said earlier, when do we give up? When do we say, no, obviously, you're not, you're, I'm not your target audience anymore. And, and, and it's, it's reflecting in, in the way that people are at this point, to be clear, the audience that I'm the audience that pays attention to what we do there's no more I'm pretty me and Andrew are probably the last holdouts there's there's probably a couple of other people that are just holding out that crunchy roll will suddenly figure it out but vast majority of the people that I'm paying attention to they, they they've wiped their hands of crunchy roll they, they, there's nothing left for them anymore you got something completely different out of that. I did, so I guess we might cover both directions. Hopefully one of those two is the answer to your question. I think there is another issue aspect of just specifically on the opinion versus standard no. It's like, yeah, there's there's technically not – it's hard to really – there's two aspects of it. One is that a lot of opinions on the studios and the, and the Japanese side of things is very unknown because they are very tight-lipped. They don't burn bridges by – broadcasting out all their problems that's happening behind the scenes yes there's some animators and stuff that will tweet about them sleeping under their desks and whatnot that's those little brief moments we get some sort of insight but for the most part a lot of the business practices and the head ups the higher ups you don't really hear anything and so it's a lot of us having to speculate on what's going on and it's using past experiences to add to it and there is a difficulty in what we talk about that we don't sit here and go oh by the way source this Oh, by the way, source this. Oh, by the way, source this. Because it's a lot of us building up that knowledge and having that in the back of our heads, but it necessarily not being something that we're always going to be able to pull from because I don't remember what that source was that we talked about four years ago. I just know that that happened back there, and that's going to reflect on this now. Um, so it's like a, there is an aspect of not really, yeah, do you do you have expectations for sources? I think if I were to do like some crazy analysis on something, I would gonna I would have sources. But for just the standard talk uh, discussion, I'm not gonna sit here and try to oh, crap. Hold on a second. Let me let me Google search what that original date was because I I want to make sure that people have concrete proof or something like that. But um, in in regards to you, uh, again, I think you talking about the idea of somebody saying that something is the no versus it just being your opinion. Yes, in most cases it's going to be our opinion, but there's going to be some cases where we state, you know, look, this happened, this here. That's why I like to say, you know, Shoeisha announced that this show was happening, not announcing the millions of leaks that are currently on Twitter right now saying, oh, this show is getting a second season. Oh, by the way, Dress Up Darling is getting a second season. It's going to be announced soon. I don't want to announce that because I don't have a website, a publisher that says that it's happening. Um, anyways. We'll leave it there. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, we had a lot of news to go through, and I'm glad that we got a lot of discussion out of some of the topics, and I'm sure a lot of people were curious to hear Chris's opinion on some stuff. Um, again, like I said, I'm unless me and Chris come up with a, a topic that we want to dive into next week, we might just do a, a mailbag episode next week. That way we can get caught up on some questions. Um, I know that we, there was a couple that were popping in here that I was like, that would be really interesting to dive into, so... We'll see. I know a lot of these comments are people that want live stream uh, reacts for <laughs> Miami list, which we had a lot of fun with, uh, which, by the way, I typically stream every Wednesday um, would be like 430 Pacific Standard Time. I think it is um, on Twitch TV slash Taku Spirited. That's an ED at the end of it because somebody stole my name. Um, <laughs> all links are at Taku Spirit dot com. Uh, that's where you can go front find all of our links to support us, including Patreon. If you want to throw us a buck a month, that'd be really fantastic. Uh, we have a tips link there if you want to do a one-time donation. Uh, also, if you're listening to us on YouTube, you can hit that super thanks button and uh, support us that way. We definitely appreciate everybody that does. Um, it, it's, it's, it means a lot to us. And just telling people about us is great. The feedback, comments, and all that kind of stuff, it all it all helps. The likes, all the, all that kind of stuff. So. It's been a while, but we've never plugged our, U our iTunes uh, ratings over there, too. And one of these days, we need to go back to reading those. 
Yeah. At some point, I think I got I got discouraged because there was people making fun of my pronunciations and stuff. But babacas. Uh, anyways, <laughs> hope you guys enjoy this. As always, we thank you all for listening, and y'all take care. Oos.